Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we are addressing how we can become better in personality profiling. How can you know the personality type of your mom, your siblings, your friends, your family, and your so-called villains in your life, antagonists, and people you dislike? How can you understand other people without stereotypes, without misconceptions? How can we understand the subjective condition that is to be a human? Any great, gifted personality psychologist will understand that a psychological diagnosis, a personality type, a cognitive function, an intelligence is, to some degree, pure fiction. The human condition and the study of the human condition is rooted in fiction, in <laughs> personal observations, in people's subjective stories about themselves, in the stories people tell us about them, in the stories we tell others about them. Personality psychology is devoted to the study of that subjective condition. And here people keep saying, but if it's subjective, that means there's no truth. But they couldn't be more wrong. The subjective condition is real. People can experience qualities, experiences, nuances that are, to some level, subjective, personal. But just because they are subjective doesn't mean they aren't real. The most gifted personality profiler in the world is a writer. Most likely it's someone like George R. R. Martin, it's J.K. Rowling, it's a gifted writer, someone with the Nobel Prize in fiction perhaps. Perhaps it's a talk show host, perhaps it's Oprah Winfrey, perhaps it's someone else that has a deep understanding of the human condition, that understands people, that makes people feel understood. It's a healer. It's someone that has the ability to deeply listen to you and to hear things that you don't even hear yourself saying. What we are doing as humans is 50% of it's all rooted in the subjective experience. It's rooted in how we perceive each other, in how others perceive themselves, in storytelling, in fiction, in writing, in acting. We are all acting all the time. We are acting out ourselves and what we think will get our means and motives met. And sure, today we have the ability to measure the human brain to some degree. We can study genes, we can study patterns, we can study the human mind and its different processes. I love this. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating field. But regardless of what tools we use, regardless of how we type other people or how we classify them, what we are doing and what we are telling each other is about what we have measured will still be fiction. It will still be our perception of the evidence that we have gathered. It will still be our perception of the patterns we have discovered. And it is only true being a great, uh, being a great curator of fiction, to being a great understanding of the, having a great understanding of the subjective factor that you can be a good personality profiler. So when you're challenging me and when you're questioning me and my ability to type celebrities, to type other people, to type myself, what you're questioning is in part either how I label things and in part my own self-understanding, my own understanding of other people. And I'm sorry guys, but it's not enough for you to tell me I'm mistyped. You have to also be able to provide evidence of why I'm mistyped and you have to give me some kind of tool so that I can reach that answer or understand what it is you are seeing. But I also get a lot of people who simply tell me I'm wrong, but who don't have that ability to understand why I'm wrong. They don't have that ability to communicate and tell me what I'm wrong about or why I'm wrong about it. They don't understand what they're seeing. They see something, but they don't understand what they're seeing. And maybe what they're seeing is correct. But I think that also, to some degree, these people don't understand what it is they are seeing. When the subjective factor can regard questions like how blue is the sky? How green is the grass? How good is that song? How harmonious was that short on the guitar? How friendly is that person? How warm is that person? How cold is that person? And here's the thing, I'm quite confident in my abilities to understand the subjective condition. I have seen with time that I am a gifted reader of other people and I think other people would see me the same way. I have come to learn over time that I am 
perhaps because I've read so many books over my life, perhaps because of uh, how many movies I've seen, how many people I've met, perhaps uh, because of my experiences in life, I am good with people. But I'm also a philosopher, and as a philosopher, you must be honest with yourself. And honesty is to admit that true wisdom is to be aware of how little you know. For a long time, I was paralyzed by that quote, because I thought that if I can never know anything for sure, how can I ever speak out to any other person? How can I ever tell anyone else what I'm thinking? But then I kind of realized that the only way for me to learn more was to be courageous in expressing my personal truth. I had to be brave in showing other people what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling, what I see. To be open to let other people tell me I'm wrong. And I'm working on every day being transparent with all of you in how I type other people, why I type other people the way I do. And I'm transparent with you on who and how I type each person. I'm transparent with you all when I'm confident. I'm transparent with you all when I'm unconfident. I tell you all what I'm sure of. And I tell you all what I'm uncertain of. And I think that's the quality of a good personality profiler. A person that dares to type others, dares to show other people their truth, but dares to be wrong, dares to learn, grow, and change. I admit how little I know, but I feel emboldened by that awareness. I become curious by that awareness. And I realize that the more I know of how little I know, the more hungry I am to learn more about the things I don't know, the more curious I get. And that is what spurs me on all this time. That's curiosity, this burning curiosity to learn more about other people, to learn more about myself, to learn more about the subjective condition. I've said that I study eudaimonia, uh, the human condition, the good life, what the good life is to each individual person. Something I've done that is so different from other personality profilers is I've stopped stereotyping people based on how they come across. I've put a demand on myself that I wish other personality profilers would put on themselves. And that is that the subjective factor and the subjective condition, the stories I tell you all about how people work, is only good if it can help other people grow. If the stories I tell you about yourself lead to you feeling imprisoned, trapped, limited, hurt, less than what you are, then the stories I'm telling you are bad. Or, I guess, your perception of the stories I tell you might be bad. And that's why I'm constantly asking all of you to curate what I'm saying. I'm asking you to question what I'm saying. I'm asking you to be critical and open-minded. And I ask you to tell me how I make you feel, how I affect you with what I say and what I do. If what I say helps you unlock energy you didn't know you had, passion you didn't know you had, enthusiasm you didn't know you had, confidence you didn't know you had, or if it helps you get rid of stress and issues and traumas that you had in your past, then I'm doing something good. The only demand I can truly have on myself is to be a good person, to do something good with what I do, to help people with what I do, to make a difference. And I'm seeing here, and I think this is what I'm seeing, maybe it's not true, but I think it is that people are becoming more confident from watching my videos. They are becoming more certain of their personality types. They are becoming more understanding towards themselves and towards other people. They are becoming less critical of others, less angry towards different personality types. They are getting rid of stereotypes and misconceptions and limiting beliefs about themselves and others. They are learning to see other people in greater nuance. That's at least what I'm hoping. I want you to test when one type begins and another type ends. When a person goes from being an INFP to being an ENFP. When a person goes from being an INFP in the INTJ subtype to being an INTJ in the INFP subtype. I want you to see the differences between type and personality type and development. 
I want you to settle not just for giving another person a type, but also for understanding that other person and what that type means to that person. This four-letter code that we are all clinging to, INFP, ESTJ, is just a code. It's useless if it doesn't have a program to interpret it. And so I want you to go and start reading, and I want you to start studying other people. And I want you to start exploring the overlaps between you and other people. I want you to notice the similarities between two opposites like the INFP and the ENFP, or the INFJ and the ESTP. Because no matter how different we are, we all share a lot of similarities because we're human. Why do I want you to do that? Because there are similarities between all people throughout all parts of the world. There are similarities between all of us that are rooted in the fact that we are all human. We all share some set human needs, some set human instincts that are more or less universal. We have things that we all love and need to thrive. For example, family, love, connection. And so, no matter how different we all are, we are all going to be able to connect on those human levels and the fact that we are human. And so, whenever you feel disconnected from others, all you need to do is reach into your own humanity. And that's where you can start finding connection with others. And I want you to understand that when you are typing people you dislike, people that are unhealthy, people that are stressed, tense, angry, hurt, you're going to be falling prone to mistypes. Because what you see in these people is their personality type at their worst, their type devoid of humanity, devoid of that essential thing that makes us happy, that makes us healthy, that makes us thrive. So when people come to me and they tell me, oh, fucking ESFJs or fucking ESTPs, what they are missing is that essential humanity. What they are missing is that they are dealing with someone deeply unhealthy. And that hurts into their ability to type that person accurately. So what I'm asking all of you to do is to start making charts like this. Start making charts where you go over different personality types and you start thinking about what are their types what are their subtypes? How have they developed themselves? What is their Enneagram type? What is their story? What is that that drives these people? Are these people healthy? Are these people motivated? Are these people happy? Are these people at their best or are they struggling with something? And as you do all of this, note down that you might not always be confident about their type. When you're not confident, write what you're confident about. Write what you're not confident about. Put check marks to go back later, to expand, to go, to move on, to not get stuck, but to keep on going back and forth, testing, exploring patterns. You'll make connections, you'll see similarities that you will suddenly go like, wow, you'll feel clicks. And it's in these clicks that you gain confidence. That click when you notice that you've found two identical people, or two people with similar life stories, and when you are starting to make these connections between them. Start realizing that you're going to have many clicks and for many different reasons. Find out why you clicked. Find out what you clicked about. Find out what it was about them that made you figure out their type. And use the cognitive functions, but don't limit yourself to the standard eight. Also look at similarities between being an introvert and a feeling type, or being an extrovert and a feeling type. Start looking at differences between an introvert and intuitive type compared to being an extroverted and intuitive type. Use all resources available to type others. Don't limit yourself to just one or two of them. Because the more connections you can make, the stronger you read. If you can see patterns, not just in body language, but in quotes, in personality, in expression, in different intelligences, in the development, then that's where you get confidence. And feel free not to limit yourself to just one methodology. Don't just limit yourself to the MBTI, but perhaps look at Shalom S. Shade, uh, Swartz uh, value survey. Uh, study people's different values and self-direction, stimulation, hedonism, achievement. And connect them to personality types. Start connecting a person's values as NFs, STs, SJs, uh, SFs. 
Start looking at the differences between intuitives and sensors. Start looking at the body language of intuitives and sensors. Start looking at uh, a person's outgoingness and separate outgoingness from extroversion and understand that a person can be outgoing without being an extrovert and that a person can be shy without being an introvert. Perhaps find study buddies, people around you who are also interested and start sharing notes with each other, start discussing with each other, start discussing the nuances and always with the intent of learning more, never with the intent of stereotyping or discriminating. And now you might ask yourself, what's the point? Why do I do this? What's, why should I do this to begin with? But through this, there is nothing that has that means more than understanding yourself. If you don't understand yourself, you're not gonna get any value from power, from money, from riches, from family. If you don't understand what you need to be happy, you're not gonna have strong connections and strong relationships. If you don't understand what you need to succeed in life and what success means to you, then success isn't gonna mean anything to you. You're gonna need that self-understanding, you're gonna need that wisdom, or nothing else is going to matter. So to your friends and family that ask you what the value of this is, tell them there is nothing that has more value than this. And by this I mean reading books, watching movies, talking to people, learning about people, exploring people from all angles, from all perspectives, without bias, without stereotypes, without limiting beliefs. That is the goal and that is the challenge I'm offering you today. I hope you all enjoy this video, I hope you all take this challenge to heart and I hope that you will, uh, oh my god, what is this ending? I have no clue what I just said. Anyways, have a good day everyone, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.